Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by. In today's video, I have six St. Patrick's Day decor DIYs to share that are not only festive, but are also classy. All of these projects are really easy to make and will add a bit of the luck of the Irish to any decor. Let's go ahead and jump into DIY number one. For this project, I used one of these large 26 ounce beer mugs from the Dollar Tree and some of these acrylic amber colored rock gems from Amazon and I will leave a link to these in the description box below. I started by pouring the acrylic gems into the mug until it was almost completely full, leaving about an inch or so at the top. I then took some polyfill, fluffed it up a bit, and placed it down inside the top of the mug, tucking it around the inside edge of the glass to act as a faux foam. Next, I took one of these large white hydrangea stems from Walmart and cut off the top right above the two leaves and then removed the smaller leaf and cut off that little stem. I then placed it down inside the top of the mug and fluffed up the flowers and this project is finished. I think this turned out absolutely adorable. I also think that it would look just as beautiful with some fairy lights mixed in with the gems. Quickly moving on to DIY number two. For this project, I used one piece of wood that was roughly three inches wide and seven and a half inches long, as well as three pieces that were roughly five and a half inches long and two inches wide, all of which came from this wood economy bag that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I started by sanding all of the wood pieces to smooth and round the edges. Next, I used wood glue to attach one of the smaller wood pieces to the top of the larger wood piece in the center. I then continued to use wood glue to stack the other two pieces of wood on top of the first piece of wood to create the top of the leprechaun hat and set it aside to dry for several hours. Once the glue had time to set up, I used apple barrel paint in the color Kelly Green to paint the entire hat with two good coats. After the paint was dry, I used a finger sander and heavily distressed the entire hat, focusing mainly on the edges and where the wood pieces were glued together. Next, I used some Waverly Antique Wax and a stencil brush to distress the entire hat, again focusing on all of the edges. Once I was happy with the way the hat looked, I took some of this one and a half inch black polyester ribbon that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to attach it to the bottom tier of the hat to act as a hat band. When I had one end of the ribbon attached to the hat, I wrapped it around the base, cut off the excess ribbon, and used hot glue to secure the other end to the back of the hat. I then took some more of the black ribbon and tied a simple shoestring bow and used hot glue to attach it to the bottom right side of the hat. Once it was attached, I went ahead and dovetailed the ends. Next, I took one of these small wooden shamrocks from this pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used apple barrel paint in the color spring green to paint the front. After the paint was dry, I used Waverly Antique Wax and distressed around the edges of the shamrock as well as right in the center. Then to finish up this project, I used hot glue to attach the shamrock to the top left side of the hat and this one is finished. I absolutely love the way this little leprechaun hat turned out. I love the rustic vibe mixed with the pop of green color. On to DIY number three. For this project, I used one of these large canning jars from the Dollar Tree and started by removing the lid. I then took Waverly chalk paint in the color moss and gave the jar a couple good coats, making sure it was completely covered. Next, I used some of this two and a half inch green and cream colored ribbon that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used hot glue to attach one end of the ribbon to the back of the jar. I then wrapped it all the way around the middle of the jar cut off the excess ribbon, and used hot glue to secure the other end in place. Next, I used some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and again, starting at the back side of the jar, used hot glue to attach one end of the burlap ribbon to the middle of the green ribbon, and wrapped it all the way around the jar, cut off the excess, and then secured the end in place with more hot glue. I then took one of these small wooden shamrocks from this package that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the front side. 
Once that was dry, I took apple barrel paint in the color brown oxide and stippled it over the top of the shamrock. And while the paint was still wet, I took some cinnamon and sprinkled it on top, tapping off the excess. I continued to repeat this step with the brown paint and cinnamon until I had the entire shamrock covered. Next, while the paint was still wet, I went back in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and using the same brush with the brown paint still on it, stippled it onto the shamrock followed by more cinnamon. Then while all of the paint was still wet, to blend it all together, I went back in and just using the paint still on the brush, stippled back over the top, picking up more cinnamon as needed. Here is how the shamrock looked once I was happy with it. I used Mod Podge Gloss Clear Acrylic Sealer to seal in all of the paint and cinnamon to really make it look good and rusty. Once the shamrock was completely dry, I used hot glue to attach it to the center of the burlap ribbon on the front of the jar. Then to finish up this project, I took some jute from the Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the neck of the jar twice and tied it into a simple shoestring bow on the front of the jar and trimmed up the tails. This is another one of those projects that is super simple, but looks so rustic and beautiful. I decided to fill mine with some St. Patrick's Day pit berries from Hobby Lobby and some greenery and white carnations from Walmart. Next up, DIY number four. For this project, I used two of these 8x10 canvases from the Dollar Tree and started by carefully removing the canvas material from the frames using a flathead screwdriver and a pair of pliers. Once the canvas material was removed, there was a staple in each of the four corners on the back side of the frames, so I went ahead and removed those as well. Next, I took a finger sander and sanded both frames so that they were nice and smooth. I then took a hammer and very gently hit one side of one of the frames to help pull the nail loose so that I had an opening at the bottom of the frame. After I had the bottom piece of the frame open, I placed it over the bottom piece of the other frame so that they were interlocking and became one piece. Once I had the frames together, I took a hammer and reattached the bottom and side of the first frame to close it back up. Next, I used Waverly Antique Wax to stain both frames and allowed them to dry for a couple of hours. After they were completely dry, I used hot glue to attach the two frames together in the middle with one of the frames standing vertically and the other standing horizontally. When the glue had set up, I flipped the piece over and secured the bottoms of the frames together. I then took two of these large wooden beads from Amazon and used hot glue to attach them to the bottom of the lantern on the two ends that were up off of the table to level it up so that it would stand up straight. I also used one of these small wood finials from this pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and used a miter saw to cut off the end and sanded it smooth. After I had the end cut off, I used some hot glue to attach it to the top of the lantern in the middle where the frames overlapped. Once it was attached, I took Waverly Antique Wax and stained the finial and the wood beads. Next, I took a small eye hook and placed it in the middle of the lantern on the inside at the top where the two frames overlapped. I then used one of these metal and wood shamrocks that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby and three of these decorative tacks that I had in my stash. I used some heavy duty wire cutters to cut off the tips of the tacks, then used hot glue to attach one to each of the three points of the wooden shamrock. There was a little bit of the tack part left on each of the heads, so I just pushed them down into the wooden shamrock. Then to finish up this project, I cut the hanger on the shamrock and fed the twine through the eye hook on the lantern and tied it in a knot so that it would hang straight and this one is finished. This may just be my most favorite project out of today's video. I really do love the rustic charm of the wood mixed with the metal and the pop of green. Not to mention the best part of this DIY being that I can always change out the little hangers for the different holidays and seasons. Moving on to DIY number five. For this project, I used one of these large tinsel shamrocks from the Dollar Tree and started by removing all of the tinsel so that I was left with only the frame. Since the frame had these plastic tabs along the inside of the shamrock leaves, I took a small pair of cutters and cut them all off as close to the frame as possible. 
Next, I took some of the twine from the Dollar Tree and wrapped it tightly around just the leaves of the shamrock, using hot glue as needed to secure it in place. I then took some of this six-ply jute macrame cord from Hobby Lobby and cut three pieces that were roughly 23 inches long. Using hot glue, I attached one end of each of the three pieces of jute together so that it was one piece with three tails. Once the three pieces were attached, I braided the tails together the entire length of the jute so that I had one big braid, again securing the other end pieces together with hot glue. I then repeated this step to create two more jute braids. Next, starting at the bottom of one of the shamrock leaves, I used hot glue to attach one of the jute braids all the way around the leaf on the front side. The braid is much easier to attach if you work in sections, especially around the top of the leaves where it dips. After I had the entire leaf covered with the jute braid, I cut off the excess braid and secured the ends together with more hot glue. I then repeated this step to attach the other two jute braids to the other two shamrock leaves. For the stem, I used more of the six-ply jute and starting at the top of the shamrock, I used hot glue to secure the jute to the back side of the frame, then pulled the jute through the front of the leaf and began wrapping it around the small piece of stem that was still visible, using hot glue as needed to secure it in place. This is what it looked like once I was finished. Once I had the top part of the stem wrapped, I moved on to the middle part of the stem between the two other leaves, feeding the jute through the two leaves that were across from one another a few times then crisscrossing the jute once over the middle so that it looked like this. After I was happy with the way the middle looked, I moved on to the bottom half of the stem by simply wrapping the jute all the way down to the bottom, using hot glue as needed to secure it in place. Then once I got to the very bottom, I added a dab of hot glue to secure the jute in place and then wrapped it back around the stem all the way up to the middle before securing it with more hot glue and cutting off the excess jute. I'm not a big fan of jute fuzzies, so I went ahead and used the lighter to burn off all of the fuzzies and give the jute a nice rustic touch. Then to finish up this project, I took one of these large antique brass tacks from this pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and applied some hot glue to the back side of the tack and pushed it down into the jute in the middle of the shamrock. Y'all, this turned out so pretty. I love the rustic look of the jute mixed with the antique brass tack that really gives this piece an old world feel. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. And last but not least, DIY number six. For this project, I used one of these 11 inch wooden trays that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and started by using Waverly Antique Wax to stain the entire tray inside and out. I also used three of these grapevine hearts from this pack that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I wanted to add a little pop of green to this heart, so I took some of the reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach it around the front of the heart and used a flat tool to gently push the moss down in between the grapevine pieces and continued to do this all the way around the heart until I had it covered with the moss. I then repeated this step until I had all three hearts covered. Once the tray was completely dry, I placed the three hearts in the center in the shape of a shamrock and used hot glue to secure each of them into place. Next, I took one of these half wood pieces that I had in my stash and used hot glue to attach it to the tray right under the hearts to create the stem of the shamrock. Then to finish up this piece, I made a simple shoestring bow from some of the thicker jute from Walmart and used hot glue to attach it to the top of the stem to help pull the whole shamrock together and trimmed up the tails. Okay, so this one is definitely in second place for my favorite of the video. I love how simple and rustic it feels, but it really pulls that St. Patrick's Day feel into my decor. And that's it for all of today's St. Patrick's Day decor DIYs. I hope you enjoyed watching and were inspired to create some of these projects for your own home. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. This was a tough one because I really do love all of them, but I'm going to have to go with the lantern being my most favorite. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, 
What are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. I'll see y'all next time.